Hi, everybody. Welcome once again to the Farm and Country Podcast. I'm your lovable, balding host, Adam Schneider. Today, today is episode 10, and we are talking about five things that you can do right now to get your garden started. So, yeah, I know if you live in, you know, Florida or California, you've probably been gardening for like, you know, basically nonstop. Uh, So you guys can go ahead and just ignore this because many of us here in North America, we have what's called winter. And okay, yeah, I know some people in California have winter because you have a weird state that covers like seven different climate zones. But here in Canada, um, the only place that basically doesn't get much for winter is on the West Coast. Everyone else basically gets hammered with snow. And today, as I'm looking out my window, I am seeing the melting remains of a very late spring snowstorm. It was it was a pretty mild one, but it it ended up getting pretty deep. So I mean if I'd have had a if I'd have had any kind of non frost tolerant plants out there or any kind of even delicate plants that were just starting to bud, they probably really wouldn't have liked this weather very much but unfortunately or fortunately I mean depends on whether you like snow or not this is very typical for this time of year in Canada Um, you're gonna be hearing this in May but I recorded it at the very end of April Uh, we can still get snow from here on in this is not the end of snow here in Canada it can snow all the way up until the end of May uh, which is rare but it does happen so it's something you have to plan for when you're looking at gardening. So how do you, you know, how do you do it? You know, what are five things that you can do when it's still early spring to get your garden going? So here in in my uh, grow zone, which is I think a three B, if you know the the growing zones, three B is just a few steps up from the Arctic, which is like zero. Um, and it goes all the way up to seven or nine. I can't even remember. I just don't even pay attention to that because I just know I'm a three B. Um, so we're we're in a pretty cold growing zone. But there are a lot of things that you can do to get your garden started right now. And you don't have to wait until the snow melts. You don't have to do any of those kinds of things. So I'm going to give you those five ways that you can get your garden started right now. And hopefully you're going to get motivated to get out there and start planting it. Um, Unfortunately for me, I'm not going to have a garden this year. I've got too many things to do. And planting a garden, even a very small one, would probably just, it would just tax my time and would tax my focus far too much. So this year I'm gardenless, guys. But I am definitely not without things to do. But I have been doing gardening in the past, and when I did garden, here's where, you know, I had to start planning right now. So, of course, the number five thing to do is start planning your garden right now. Um, the, The last frost day comes quickly. For me here, it's a month and some away. Usually June 1st is, you know, an okay day to start putting things out. Um, Some people will start setting things out at the end of May. There's still a risk of frost at the end of May out here. So I don't think I would do anything with frost intolerant plants like tomatoes, cucumbers, uh, squashes and stuff like that. I would keep those indoors. But you can start planning now. So if you've got your garden space already set aside, go out there and visualize what you're going to do. Are you going to square foot garden? Are you going to build rows? You know, what are you going to mulch with? Are you going to cover your growing seedlings with some uh, frost blankets or something like that to try and push the the start back a few weeks? Start planning that right now because you're running out of time. So the number four thing to do, and I'm sure every gardener knows this, but you start your seeds indoors. But what not every gardener knows is how to do this. So, I mean, 
I don't know how many times I bought those little plastic seed starter things. I hate those things. Um, I really, 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 really hate those things. What I prefer instead are soil blockers. So soil blockers are these, these little, uh, it's a tool and you have to put, uh, you basically put peat moss and starter soil in there and you make a cube of soil and then you plant your seed in the cube and it does the same thing as a regular little, uh, one of those little seed starter plastic things, except these soil blockers, there's no waste. Um, and the soil cube can be planted directly in the garden. So I'm going to try to include a link for, let me make a note of that, soil blockers. So you can see exactly what I've been using to create my seed starting. So I'm putting a link to that. I have some of these soil blockers. I've used them a few times. They're awesome. So another tip when you're starting seeds indoors is that seedlings require a lot of sunlight. Even if they're a plant that doesn't need a lot of sunlight, if they don't get enough sunlight, and most of them don't if they're indoors, what you're going to get is a seedling that's too skinny and it's not going to thrive. So what you want for a healthy thriving seedling is a short seedling that's, you know, got a couple of its uh, first leaves out there. You know, the seed leaves obviously are coming out, but the seed leaves are the two leaves that you get when you first plant it. So if you're planting beans, those two little leaves that pop out of the seed, those are called the seed leaves. Now the next two leaves that you get are called true leaves. Now you want to get a short, stubby, thick stalk on that seedling or it's gonna it, it's not gonna thrive very well it's gonna fall over uh, it's gonna be spindly you don't want that so you gotta give that seedling a good quantity of light and if you don't have enough light you can actually use a grow light now it just so happens that a lot of these grow lights are sold on places like Amazon so I'm gonna be putting a link in the show notes today for you to be able to buy one of these grow lights. And I'll be honest with you guys, if you buy one of these grow lights, I'll probably make a little bit of money because it's an affiliate link. And I am an Amazon affiliate. But hey, a good product is a good product. Am I right or am I right? And I know I'm right. So if you get one of these grow lights, you don't really have to worry too much about putting your seedlings in a window because the grow light will take care of that for you as long as it's got a powerful enough bulb in it. So keep an eye out for that in the show notes on farmandcountrypodcast.com episode 10. So number three, you got to start mulching your bushes and shrubs. Now, of course, if you, if you follow good instructions and you, you're a, you're in a handy gardener, you probably were mulching back in the fall, but it doesn't hurt to re-mulch in the springtime. You know, mulching your shrubs and bushes, whether they produce food or not, is a good idea no matter what you're doing, because what that mulch is going to do is it's going to suppress weeds. It's going to suppress any new weeds, and it's going to suppress the old ones that are going to try and pop up in the springtime. I mean, I look outside right now and I see grass just just doing really well. It's green. It's starting to grow. It's starting to get long. I think I might even have to cut the grass here in a couple of weeks. But um, along with the grass reviving comes weeds. And if you've got shrubs and bushes and you don't want weeds next to them or choking them out, then start mulching. And that mulch will help preserve the soil, moist, soil moisture um, from the rain. And you might not have to water that shrub or that tree for the rest of at least the springtime and maybe not even the summer if the mulch stays. Now where I'm, where I'm at, I need to mulch with wood chips and heavy things like that because the wind just blows grass clippings and leaves, you know, into the next county. So, you know, when I mulch, I need to use, you know, big chunks of mulch, like, you know, 
chunks of a hay bale or something like that, or it just doesn't work. So number two, start planting some cold loving vegetables right now. Yes, you heard me. You can plant vegetables right now and they will love it. Okay, so here's a couple of cold loving vegetables that you can plant right now. This is by no means an exhaustive list. This is just the ones that I know about and have tried before. So number one, peas. Peas do fine. They're, they have frost tolerance. I mean, unless you're planting a variety that isn't frost tolerant, most peas are frost tolerant. Uh, same with broccoli. Uh, I don't know about cauliflower. I've never done cauliflower. But anything in the broccoli family will be absolutely fine to plant right now. And they can tolerate a little bit of frost. They can even tolerate a little bit of snow. And uh, so in the broccoli family, you've got kale. You've got Brussels sprouts if you're a sadist. Uh, you've got, I believe, celery is in that family too. Not 100% sure about that. But anything in the brassica family, which is what broccoli is, can be planted right now. And you can even plant the seedlings that you started a month ago. So next year, guys, when you're planning your garden, start these peas, start these cold tolerant vegetables inside. You can start them in March. And when they get big enough in April, you can go out there and just throw them right in the soil. Put them right in the soil and they will love it. So, of course, the last thing you can do, and I know that a lot of people don't like doing this, um, but it is definitely an option, okay? And for me, it's probably the only option for me to actually have productive tomatoes without a greenhouse. So you can go and buy already started tomato plants, cucumbers, or whatever it is that you're looking to start and plant. You can buy them already started. You can buy herbs. So you can buy little pots with a small herbs you know, already started in there. And because it's still not past the last frost date, uh, you're going to have to keep them in the pot for the time being, but you can move them in and out. So during the day when it's above freezing, you put them out on your deck. Now make sure that, you know, your dog's not going to knock them over or that, you know, some other animal's not going to come and start chewing on them. Although if they're a tomato, they probably won't. The leaves are poisonous. But assuming that you can protect them, you can put them on your deck or put them somewhere outside and then bring them in at night. So if you've got a garage, you've got a perfect location to store your plants at night. You just have to remember to take them in at night and not leave them out. Um, although, uh, you know, if it doesn't freeze overnight, they'll probably be okay. But I, I wouldn't want to risk it. So buying started tomato plants, you know, my... My daughter loves cherry tomatoes, so this year I said, okay, you know what, we'll try a cherry tomato plant. We'll see how it goes. We don't have a lot of space to put it, but we're going to try it. So that's basically going to be my garden this year is a cherry tomato plant. But, you know, you got to start somewhere, right? Now, cucumbers fall into the same family as tomatoes. They are not frost tolerant. And if you allow them to freeze, they will turn black and die. So you don't want that. But you can either buy started cucumbers or you can start them yourself. And honestly, if you wanted to start them, you probably should have started them about a month and a half ago. And again, check out these soil blockers because they are perfect for, for uh, making new seedlings start. Honestly, guys, these soil blockers are a game changer when it comes to gardening. And you can even put a small block of soil into a larger one. So it's, it's kind of like what they call potting up. A lot of gardeners will take a, a plant that's outgrown its pot and they'll put it in a bigger pot. And well, you can do that with these soil blockers. You can put a small soil block into a larger one. Now, I don't have the largest kind of soil blocker, but you can get big ones. Uh, and they're good for for tomatoes and cucumbers, starting them really, really early indoors, and then you just keep moving them up. 
So that is five things that you can do to get your garden started right now. Now check out those links that I showed you and you can pick up some good products to get your garden going. And now, guys, the episode is not over yet because I have my Friday rant to, to go here. So stand by. All right, I had to pause the recording and take a drink of water because I'm going to be ranting about something here, guys. And today's rant, I'm talking about poverty mentality. Yeah, I'm talking about people that are always complaining that they don't have enough money. Now, if you're one of these people, pay attention to what I'm about to tell you because it's going to change the way you look at poverty. So, what is poverty? Now, in la the last episode, I talked about poverty and I said that the poverty line here in Canada is something like $22,000 a year. And you know what? That's not a lot of money. I absolutely agree that there comes a point where you don't have enough money to pay for the things that you would like to pay for, okay? So a someone earning 22,000 bucks an hour, sorry, <laughs> I keep saying that. Someone earning $22,000 a year is definitely not gonna be owning a car, paying a car payment. They're not gonna be owning a $300,000 house. They're probably not even gonna be able to afford a car. I mean, they might be able to afford a basic cell phone plan with like text messaging only. Okay, $22,000 a year doesn't buy you much. And I know that you guys in the United States, you know, your poverty line is a little bit lower because your dollar goes further. Um, here in Canada, uh, the dollar is worth about 70 cents US right now. And it's been hovering about at that rate for a long time. I don't see any change happening there. Uh, so it is what it is, right? The exchange rate sucks. So whatever your poverty line is, that's that's that mental point. Um, it's not a dollar figure, guys. Poverty is mental. And I had this, I actually had a pretty good argument with somebody who is an old friend of mine. And he added me on Facebook after many, many years. And he always posts these articles about poverty. And he's always talking about, oh man, you know, teachers' aides don't make enough money. You know, repost this meme if you think that teachers' aides should make more than uh, whatever they're making now. So I looked it up and I found out that teachers' aides make 21 bucks an hour. And I, I was thinking, uh, that's pretty good. You know, what's wrong with 20 bucks an hour? And, and to be honest, being a teacher's aide requires one year of education and being a teacher requires five, okay? So why should teacher's aides make the same amount of money as a teacher when a teacher has to go for four extra years of schooling to be able to qualify for that position? And getting a job as a teacher, guys, even when you've got that education is not easy. So I'll be honest with you. I know teachers make a lot of money. I think I don't know that necessarily I don't know if they make too much money or not, but I know that I I'm not proposing any pay cuts for teachers. But at the same time, if you're in a profession and you're like, "Man, I hate my wage. My wage sucks." You have fallen victim to this poverty mentality. Okay? Because you have the ability to change your circumstances. And I had this discussion with my friend. And in the end, we had to agree to disagree because he just couldn't come around to see what I was talking about. You know, I he was like, well, how come the janitor doesn't make, you know, a living wage? And everybody talks about this stupid living wage as if it's a real thing. Did you guys know that if you have $2,000 in your bank account, you are in the top 5% of income earners in the world? Yeah, $2,000, okay? And I'm not talking about just cash. $2,000 worth of net worth puts you in the top 5% of wealthiest human beings on planet Earth. That means 95% of the people living on planet Earth don't have $2,000 worth of anything to their name. Okay, if you've got uh, an old piece of crap car sitting in your driveway, you're rich. Now, 
fortunately for the rest of the world, that number is going up. Okay, so that that two thousand dollars is going up very quickly. The rest of the world is catching up to where we are in North America. But I'll tell you, how are they doing this? How are they catching up to us? It's not by whining and complaining, starting a union and complaining and, and striking for more wages. No. These guys around the world are working their heinies off to produce. They are producing the things that we are consuming. Do you guys know where most of our consumers, consumer goods come from? Yeah, they come from China. In China, there are close to a million factories making everything, consumer goods. So uh, there's a couple of websites that you can go to uh, where you'll find just reams and reams and reams of things that Chinese people are making and shipping to North America and, of course, the rest of the world. And to be fair... The Chinese people are buying a lot of their own products. But nobody in China is sitting there whining that they don't get enough money. And if they are, they're the kind of people that aren't going to succeed. Because the way to get more money is to work. And I don't mean go out there and start digging holes in the ground, doing pointless work, and expecting somebody to pay you for that. The way to make money is to do something productive that somebody will pay you for. Find a need and fill it. Give the customer what they want. If the customer wants um, jewelry, find a jewelry and sell it to them. If the customer wants, you know, um, electronics, find the electronics that the customer wants and find a way to supply it to them. Now has never been easier to make a living as an individual person with no store, with no, uh, with no capital, with no you know, knowledge of, of how to do things, how to market. You can make money as, as a basically a marketing retard. And I'm using, guys, I know people hate when I use the word retard. Please don't send me a bunch of angry emails about that. I'm using it as somebody who is just behind in their knowledge. So if you don't know what to do to make money, the knowledge is out there. And there has never been so much knowledge available. And sometimes you're going to find knowledge that doesn't do you any good, that you can't use. You know what? Read everything. You will find 90 things that you don't need and 10 things that you do. Right now, I'm in the middle of taking marketing courses. I'm learning how to sell on Amazon. I'm learning how to sell online. I'm learning how to monetize my own brand. So this, this podcast has become my brand, and I'm going to monetize that. I'm going to make money. I've got a little bit of knowledge, guys. It's not a lot. I fully and completely admit I am not a gardening genius. I'm not an off-grid guru. I'm just a guy who has had some experience. But I'm going to go out there and find the knowledge for you guys. And hopefully, I can find the right kind of knowledge that you will pay for. And I already have little pieces of knowledge that I know somebody will buy if I package it in the right package. So this rant, guys, stop talking about how how your wage sucks and how you wish you could get a raise, just stop. If you want a raise, go out there and find it. And I don't just mean, you know, start an online business or something like that. I mean, if you work for an employer and you're like, ugh, my wage sucks and I don't make enough money because my employer is a jerk. You know what? Maybe you suck as an employee. Have you ever thought about that? Maybe your employer doesn't want to pay you anymore because you're lazy. So <laughs> think about that for a second. How, how diligent are you as an employee? I can tell you for an absolute fact, if you are a diligent worker, you will never be without work. You will never be unemployed because there are always people out there that are looking for good employees. I don't mean that they're looking for employees. You know, having two feet and a heartbeat is not the bottom line, guys. You need to be able to do more than the bare minimum. 
And I've run into a lot of people who were just doing the bare minimum. Okay? And those people were all the time, they're whining about, oh, this job sucks. Oh, you know, I'm not treated very well here. Oh, I don't need to do any more than this. And you know what? I'm working with some of those people right now, and it just it drives me crazy to hear them whine and complain about their job and how they're treated unfairly. They compare themselves to other people in other, in other jobs in the same field and say, well, how come I'm not making as much as that guy? How come I don't have this benefit? How come I don't get that? You know what? I get paid very well to do what I do, and when I go into my job, I give it 100%. I give it everything I've got available to me that day in terms of energy. And I've got a difficult job. You know, it's a shift work job. It's not the kind of job that I, I want to keep forever, but it's a good job. I mean, of course, it's a government job. But that's not necessarily a problem, guys. Even if you've got a government job, you can put more effort into that job. You can go above and beyond the bare minimum. And I know that government jobs don't always support that kind of thing, but who cares? Who cares about what your coworkers think? You know what? Maybe they'll see you work hard and they'll say, oh, oh, is this what we're supposed to do here? We're actually supposed to work hard? Okay, maybe I'll work hard too. Do you know what they say? A rising tide raises all boats. Well, that's true. And when you work in a culture where the, the going thing is working hard and getting the job done, then everybody starts to get on board with that. But it takes one or it takes two people to start that mentality. So that's my rant for today, guys. Get out of the poverty mentality. Now, once again, you can find us on the internet, www.farmandcountrypodcast.com. You can look forward to an episode every Monday, every Wednesday, and every Friday. So thanks for listening, and good night.